This is from the Cisco Live uh, presentation. Alvaro did it last. Um, I think I originally did these slides. We'll just go through one of these examples and just work through some of the thinking that goes into taking the CCD practical. I don't know if Warhan has talked about this before or not, but this is um, one of those things that uh, we go through at Cisco Live or used to go through at Cisco Live. I guess we still are. I'm speaking at Cisco Live in U.S. this year, I guess. So um, let's see. All right, so I hope none of you have seen this, or if you've seen this, this is still interesting to you. Um, we have this uh, business background, which is, is um, interesting, which we can talk about. Uh, this company called Longhorn Infrastructure Services and Provision in Lisp. Uh, so uh, so this, this company called Lisp, which we made up, of course, all of these things are made up uh, for the CCD. And, and the idea here was to give a very, very short, in a presentation style, scenario of the type that you would run into in a CCD and explain the question types and explain some of the thinking that goes behind it. So in this case, you have Lisp. So these guys provide customer support services, uh, basically a call center. The original idea was you'd have a call center and you would have um, some sort of set of agents who sit there and answer the phone for these various companies. So they're in the San Francisco area with a couple of locations. Um, and, and what they're basically doing is they are trying to offer the service of customer support at a lower cost than companies can build their own call centers and stuff uh, by, imp by combining them all onto a single network infrastructure and having a single agent answer com calls for multiple companies. Um, so the idea would be is that you would call 1-800 number, you would say, yes, I'm calling about uh, you know, some particular client, of, uh, some particular company, they would act as though the, the number uh, that you call would actually trigger a pop-up on the agent screen that would say, by the way, you're answering the call for so-and-so and here's the company information and um, all of this would be automated and all of this would be automated and the customer service rep would actually act as though they worked for that company or were representing that company so the caller wouldn't know the difference. Um, by the way, I actually worked in a call center similar to this, uh, not as a full well, the call center didn't do this full time, but um, when I worked for American Society of Mechanical Engineers, our call center actually did have all the pop-ups and everything running so that we could answer calls for various engineering societies and for sales and other things as much as we could because uh, we shared our call center with other people. So anyway, that's the background. And then they uh, you know, also take the information that they're gaining from the callers and they sell it off as a byproduct of the normal operations, like what kind of problems there are with the products, what kind of questions people are answering, and things like this. So here's a few things. They have a, a service level agreement that they offer with their clients. So if you're a company and you go to Lisp and you say, hey, I want you to handle my calls for me, my customer service calls for me, then um, they have this SLA that they give you. First of all, it's total privacy. They have this SLA that they give you.